I'm Afshin Ratansi, and we're going underground and covering the stories the powerful don't want you to know. Coming up in the show. Amidst the destruction caused by UK, US and EU nations' attempts to overthrow the government of Syria, millions head to the polls in the country's first presidential election since 2014. We speak to President Assad's political advisor, Bethena Shaban, about what Damascus considers the triumph of democracy over Islamofascism, promoted by Washington, London and Brussels, and what they think is a sham. All this and more coming up in today's Going Underground. But first, when the Going Underground team went to Damascus in November 2019 to interview Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, I pressed him on the potential for upcoming presidential elections. What about the election here? Is there going to be a general election in 2021 in Syria? Yeah, definitely. And will there be more than one person on the ballot? Last time we were three. And this time, of course, we're going to have as much as uh, they want to nominate. They're going to be numerous uh, nominees. Well, now today, Syrians in the country and around the world head to the polls for the first time in seven years, despite NATO nations referring to them as a sham. I'm joined by Skype from Damascus by advisor to President Assad, Dr. Buthena Shaban. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Buthena, for coming back on the show. Well, when Going Underground went to Syria, President Assad assured us there would be elections. Just tell me what the significance of the elections are today. Thank you, Afshin. The elections today are both a constitutional right and duty. Uh, so it's by constitution the elections should be held uh, at this time. Uh, and uh, that is what's happening. And it is the right of the Syrian people uh, to exercise their right in this election. Uh, and this is the normal procedure. This is because the last election was in 2014. And uh, we hold, according to the constitution, after seven years, there should be elections. And how, can you, how can you have elections when only up till recently Israel was uh, uh, bombing, aerial bombardment of Damascus, let alone near Russia's base in Latakia, and U.S. troops are occupying parts of the country in the north? How, how can you have elections, practically even? Why can't we have elections? I mean, Israel is bombing and uh, uh, leading aggressions against our country in order to uh, spoil our constitutional and our way of life. And we are determined not to let anything, neither the terrorists nor the Israelis, to stop our way of life and to stop our constitutional rights. Part of Syria, Idlib, is occupied by the Turks. Uh, part of Northeast Syria is occupied by the Americans. Uh, the Golan is occupied by Israel. But we are going to liberate all these with the will of the Syrian people. Syria will be liberated and will be won again. Well, I'll get to the uh, illegal occupation of Golan in a second. But I know President Assad assured me that there would be multiple candidates. Even if you don't believe the British government that it's all a sham, I mean, do Abdullah Saloum Abdullah or uh, Mahmoud uh, Ahmed Marie actually stand a chance against President Assad in the elections? Well, they are nominees for the elections. You know, uh, Afshin, we really don't care what the British government or the French government say about our elections, because uh, all the reports that were leaked from both governments and from the US and from the Turkey showed that this government were financing and helping the terrorists in order to destroy our country. These countries are also standing against the elections now. So President Assad takes his legitimacy from the Syrian people. We are in Syria exercising our rights. And quite honestly, after 10 years of war against us, the Western media mostly has lost its credibility in our eyes. Well, Western media is full of stories about Belarus at the moment. Tell me about the international observers, because uh, obviously NATO and uh, many uh, journalists in so-called mainstream media would say it's a roll call of uh, a roll call of rogue states: Cuba, Russia, Venezuela, Iran, Oman, Algeria, Leso, Nicaragua. These are countries invited as international observers. Yes, Afshin, we are redefining what is international. Until recently, the West believed that Western countries are the international community. Now, we would like to let you know that we believe that China, Russia, India, Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, Syria, those are international community. And those are worthy of uh, coping with our elections and being our guests to observe our elections. The West thinks itself that it is the only credible party. This was in the past. Today, 
the West is the colonial West for us. And we don't mind whatever it says, NATO, whatever it says, because we know that they had been trying and financing and arming terrorists to destroy our country. In, in fairness to Donald Trump, he thought the elections in the United States were fraudulent, uh, obviously. Um, you mentioned China. So India are also uh, invited. Um, China, when you think about it, Xi Jinping said that uh, a priority was to, uh, to help rebuild uh, Syria and reconstruct it after uh, British and uh, American aggression, uh, de facto, as, as you see it. What sort of... Uh, what sort of reconstruction are we seeing financed uh, with the help of China? Well, there is a very strong relation between the Syrian and the Chinese uh, governments and between the Syrian and Chinese people and also between the Syrian and the Russian people. And there are lots of agreements and lots of steps that are being taken in order to prepare for rebuilding of Syria. But I let you actually know that the Syrian people are the ones who would really rebuild Syria. This capital, Damascus, that you visited, and I hope you will visit again, is the eldest continuously inhabited capital in the world, because the Syrian people have, have always fought against aggressors and occupiers. And aggressors and occupiers were always defeated, and Syrian people stayed on their land, and they will do the same now. What was it like uh, recently in Damascus? as uh, Israel, armed by Britain, the United States, European Union nations, dropped bombs on this uh, reputedly oldest city in the world? Well, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is an enemy that uh, conducts aggression, and yet uh, Western countries support uh, this aggression. I mean, how could we believe in the democracy or that they believe in human rights? Look at what happened in Palestine. I mean, 63 children and 240 people were killed, and no Western government condemned the killing of one child in Palestine. So how could we, how could we ever believe that they uh, adhere to real human rights or that they consider our lives as important as their lives? Well, this, is, this is over for us. We do what suits our people, what suits our countries, and, uh, and Western government can uh, keep their own measures for themselves. We don't care about them. Well, Britain's Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said Israel had the right of uh, self-defense, uh, of course. Uh, but how do you know Israel will not bomb today? I'm sorry, Israel has the right of self-defense. What about the Palestinian people whose land had been stolen by the Israelis? Don't they have the right to their own homes? to live in peace on their own land. I mean, uh, there are two parties here. One party is an indigenous party whose land is being stolen by a settler and occupier. And the West says, this settler and occupier has the right to defend itself against the indigenous people. I mean, this, you know, this is totally unacceptable. Well, uh, there may be two Arab nations, Oman, Algeria, invited to monitor the elections today. Uh, the Arab world has made deals with Israel uh, during the Trump administration. Where does Syria see itself? Where does Syria see itself in this uh, sorry, Arab Afshin, world of today? Sorry, Afshin, not the Arab world. Few governments have made deals with Israel, probably under pressure, probably for certain considerations, but the people of these countries who made deals with Israel were the first people to come out and support the Palestinian people and support the Syrian people. We do not, you know, uh, uh, attach importance only to governments. We attach importance to people, because finally it is people who make history, and, and it's people who implement agreements, and it's not governments. British uh, armed Saudi Arabia has reportedly been in some kind of talks with Iran, these two superpowers of the region. Any talks between uh, Damascus and Riyadh? Uh, obviously, that would terrify London, presumably, and Washington and Brussels, but any, any kind of talks with Saudi Arabia? There are some efforts that are being exerted, and we expect uh, by a third party, and we expect these efforts to uh, accelerate uh, after uh, the, the Syrian election. And um, Arab countries, uh, you know, always had, sometimes had their differences, sometimes they come uh, back together. But the, but the fact is that any uh, colonizer, settler, cannot 
have peace at the ruins of the rights of the indigenous people in this region. It never happened in history. Israel is the only occupier now in the world, and no occupation lasted. Algeria was occupied for 130 years, and then it was liberated. Palestine will be liberated, and, and the Arab will, will be liberated from all what you are describing. Well, the, the occupation of the Golan Heights, uh, UN Security Council Resolution 497, when are you going to get the Golan Heights back? Well, whenever we find the circumstances correct, and when, whenever we have the, the full power to liberate the Golan, but the Golan Heights will always be Syrian Arab land. And, you know, the late President Hafez al-Assad said, I know I, I will not be able to liberate the Golan in my own life, but I am sure that my children and the grandchildren will liberate the Golan. And I repeat the same thing. So you think that the winner of today's election will, will do that? Maybe in his term? Uphold well, this I'm UN not, Security I'm Council? Saying, well, I'm not saying that tomorrow we're going to be able to do that. But what I'm saying is that we are people who have free will and who adhere to our independent political decision, and we love our country, and we are attached to this land, and we are sure that we, are, we will make our country a country worthy of its history and of its civilization. There hasn't been much media coverage here of the uh, elections in the run-up to today's elections. I think I did see one report saying, are uh, expat Syrians being threatened to vote? They must vote. Uh, for Assad, otherwise, uh, otherwise they don't get assets back. Well, I think I think instead of this action, I would like to take you to uh, what Germany decided to prevent Syrian people from going to the embassy. If they if they think that Syrian people are not going to vote, why did Germany and Turkey prevent Syrian people from going to the embassy? And by the way. Many Syrians arrived yesterday from Germany and from Turkey to Syria just to vote for uh, in, in this election. So, you know, there is a lot of misleading news and information, unfortunately, in Western media. Are there no uh, ways of Syria to find uh, at an international institution any justice over the uh, prevention of democracy, as you would see it, by the German government? How do, how do you find, how, how could it be just to prevent? I mean, if Germany is a democratic country, what is the logic that will make Germany prevent two million people from going to the embassy to vote in their constitutional election? I mean, how could this be justified? I just ask any, any Western observer, how could this be justified? With Haina Shaban, I'll stop you there. More from the advisor to the Syrian president after this break. Welcome back. Presidential elections are today taking place in Syria. I'm still here with the media advisor to President Bashar al-Assad, Dr. Bethena Shaban. I mean, of course, the threat uh, to some Syrian residents might be it might not be safe to go to the polling uh, booths. When you heard of the Israeli attack near the Russian base at Latakia, what was the government thinking there in, in Damascus? If one of those Israeli missiles had hit the Russian base, that could change things a bit. Well, we just, we just think because the terrorists were not able to achieve the goals that were uh, put for them in this war by proxy. Uh, and so uh, when they failed, the United States brought its soldiers to the northeast of Syria. Turkey brought its soldiers to the northwest of Syria. And Israel started bombing Syria, which proves that the terrorists were leading a war by proxy on behalf of those parties who started to attack Syria after it defeated these terrorists. Now, obviously, this is not the way things are covered here in so-called mainstream media. The BBC is in the news here for setting in train events leading to the death of, death of Diana. But uh, we do get reports from the state-mandated BBC and Sky sometimes uh, about Syria. What, what would you say to viewers in NATO countries when these reports emerge from reporters on the ground, it seems, in Syria? Afshin, allow me, please, and I thank you for allowing me to address your viewers. BBC and all Western media, since 2011, started to rely on eyewitnesses 
and the leaked British paper confessed that they were financing unknown, um, anonymous eyewitnesses who have nothing to do with the media and who wrote what they were asked to write. So I beg the uh, Western people to look for different source of information from the BBC or from Western media that really is leading, are, are giving news that have nothing to do with our reality. But the borders are porous. These journalists can get there into occupied bits of Syria as you see it? Of course. They can't get to that, to that part of occupied Syria, unfortunately, and then they, can, they get whatever news they, they want from there. But this has nothing to do with the reality in Syria. Afshin, if, if they wanted to get the news about Syria, why did the BBC and all Western media withdraw their uh, representatives in Syria once the war started? The logic says that they, all the Western media should be here to report how the war is going. Instead of that, they withdrew all, all their uh, media organs and they started to rely on, on eyewitnesses and on Rami Abdurrahman, who sits on Coventry under the name of uh, Syrian, I don't know, human rights. Syrian Observatory. Exactly, exactly. That is where the media uh, was supplied uh, with figures of casualties from, from the war. Uh, Britain, obviously British people are relying on subsidized uh, food uh, through coronavirus welfare programs. When do you expect the rationing uh, to stop for ordinary Syrians? How are you going to rebuild this economy for ordinary Syrians, whoever wins at today's elections? Uh, well, uh, ordinary, uh, it is the Syrian people who will, build, who will build Syria. If you come now to Syria, Afshin, you will see the difference. Now Syrian people in their villages went back to their farms to plow the land, to, to depend on agriculture, to depend on their small project in industry. Syrian people are extremely inventive people and extremely resilient people. I'm not saying to you that Syria will be rebuilt tomorrow, but I'm saying to you that the Syrian people have the will, the energy, and the intelligence, and also they are supported by allies and friends to rebuild Syria. And Western countries are not the entire world. You know, I, I hope that they will, they will understand this, that there's a huge world out of NATO and out of the transatlantic relation that help people to rebuild and help the right people to really enjoy uh, an independent, sovereign country. Well, I think you'll find that uh, Britain, the United States, European Union nations will try and prevent that. They are sanctioning your country and uh, appear to seek you for you not to do that. I'm not sure if Bill Gates or AstraZeneca or any of these Western coronavirus uh, initiatives are helping uh, Syria. How, how is the situation with coronavirus? Uh, have you been vaccinated? Uh, well, I, uh, yes, I've been vaccinated. Um, a, a huge percentage of our people had been vaccinated with the Sputnik V and with their Chinese vaccine. And uh, uh, also the uh, World Health Organization brought us a million uh, vaccine. And uh, uh, actually, thank God, you know, uh, COVID-19 was not as harsh in Syria as it was in other places. We, uh, we followed a different strategy. We didn't lock down. People continued with their work with some precaution measures. And uh, we are fine. We are one of the lowest countries, I think, in uh, the death rate in coronavirus. Well, obviously, locked down. I mean, that's that's so far. Other countries have said that and then got into deep trouble, as we know from uh, India. What about this Syrian opposition in exile? Uh, what what will a new government? How will a new government deal with them as they campaign in uh, NATO countries and uh, let alone what the UK media has called moderate rebels for, for so Welcome, many years? They, well, you see, they call the terrorists. They call them rebels. Honestly. I just find it amazing that those people who kill and destroy and who are trying to knock the country 100 years ago uh, away, they, they, the Western media call them rebels. Those are not rebels. Those are terrorists. As for the Syrian opposition, there is a, a political track that is going on in Geneva with Geir Bederson conducting 
uh, talks between uh, a, a delegation that was named by the Syrian government and a delegation that was uh, named by the opposition. I don't know where this is going to end and what results it's going to reach, but it is an ongoing process. But you can't, you can't unite with uh, Turkey over the future. You unite, you have united condemnation for Israel, obviously, over the recent bombing of Gaza and, and the mass killing. But there is no rapprochement between uh, between Ankara and Damascus. No, of course not, because Ankara occupies part of our land. How 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 can we have any rapprochement with a country that occupies part of our land? It has to leave our land first before before we say anywhere to anyone. There, no there talks. Was no no talks. On... Between, there was no rapprochement between Syria and Israel. What what are you talking about over Gaza? There was nothing. No rapprochement, but obviously Syria and Turkey are on the same side uh, as regards what happened in Gaza. I mean, are you going to even talk with uh, Erdogan? Of course not. Of course not. He, uh, he is the one who facilitated the arrival of all terrorists into Syria. And by the way, Syria and Turkey are not on the same side. Erdogan is, is speaking words that have nothing to do with reality. He does not support the Palestinian cause. The, 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 the exchange rate between Erdogan and Israel was 1.6 billion when Erdogan came to power. Today, it's 6.5 billion. He only give, uh, gives a lip service to the, the Palestinian cause, while for us, Palestine is an integral part of Arab land, and the cause of Palestine is an integral part of our cause. Well, NATO nations are making it even difficult to travel to uh, Syria. Will the diaspora uh, Syrians, maybe many of them in London, actually, will they return uh, after these elections? Uh, well, many of them returned before the elections, and many of them came to vote in, in Syria. And I'm sure many of them, you know, I was a minister of expatriate, and we have millions of wonderful Syrians all over the world very uh, skilled, uh, very smart, very uh, productive people, and I'm sure they will play a very important role in the rebuilding of Syria in the future. But, but surely they're going to be fearful of these airstrikes. Before the recent, recent uh, news from Gaza, every other week they were bombing the suburbs of Damascus and so on. I mean, do you have the missile defense systems capable of uh, stopping a, these? We have a, a, defense, uh, a missile defense system, and nobody is afraid of Israeli airstrikes. Only Israelis are uh, circulating that uh, the people uh, are uh, terrified, but, but that's not true. That's not true at all. Uh, Israel is doing that to show that it is strong and that it it can, uh, you know, do whatever it likes. But uh, uh, it it has no impact on us at all. We 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 are, we are going on with building our country, and we know that Israel is an aggressor and Israel is an enemy, and uh, we we have been dealing with it for uh, the last uh, seventy years. You see, there were some Russian reports that uh, people should expect a false flag chemical attack. Should we, we be wary of that? And is your government wary of another media outrage about your use of chemical weapons? You know, all of what has happened with the OPCW is really scandalous by every, by every meaning of the word. People from inside the OPCW uh, said that this report has been changed, has been edited. It is not the report that came from the ground. And still, the OPCW uh, decided to vote against Syria, although it never used vote. It was always working by consensus, you know? So, so this is part of the game, you know, of the, of the terrorist game that they're playing against the Syrian people and against the Syrian government. But we know, we know how to handle it, and we know how to survive, and we know how to defeat all those. But Syria just doesn't uh, doesn't have uh, the record, have the ability to respond to British airstrike. I mean, Brit Britain could well strike your country again. Joe Biden struck it uh, within uh, 100 days of becoming president of the United States. Uh, no matter who your allies are, uh, Britain, the United States, could again bomb Syria uh, as you reconstruct. I'm going to say that to you. They bomb our country 
they they use criminal measures in these sanctions against our people that is affected the the the, the health and the lives of children and uh, of our people israel attacks our countries but there's a difference between uh, uh, leading an aggression against our country and between being able to decide the destiny and the future of our country. No matter how difficult the days are, we, the Syrian people, are the ones who are going to decide the future of our country. Finally, uh, how, how can anyone invest in Syria if there are sanctions and third-party sanctions? Uh, how can anyone invest in the reconstruction of Syria anyway? Uh, there are many people investing in Syria. The, uh, Iran has been sanctioned for the last 30 years, and now Iran is uh, is uh, so uh, achieved so much progress in every technology and in every sense. As I told you, Afshin, the world is huge. It's not only Western world. There are many parts to this world, and I think what Western countries are doing is that they are undermining their own importance in the eyes of most people in the world, because they are being so unfair and so against the sovereignty and the rights of people all over the world, especially against the rights of the Arabs in our region. Dr. Bethany Shaban, I won't ask you who you voted for. Thank you. Thank you, Afshir. That's it for the show. We'll be back on Saturday as Manchester City and Chelsea go head-to-head -head in the UEFA Champions League final, recently the victim of European Super League greed. Until then, if you're watching this online, get in touch via social media or leave a comment below on YouTube today. Let us know what you think about Syria's first presidential election for seven years. Thanks for watching this Going Underground interview. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an interview. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think by commenting below and getting in touch via our social media. See you next time. All that is solid melts into air.